are listening to Hooked on Startups, where every week you'll hear from some of the most talented, inspiring, and successful entrepreneurs who share their real life stories, how they overcame challenges and failures, and how they mastered success. Get ready for some of the best business tips, tricks and tactics, and some frank, unscripted discussions. Here's your host, Matthew Sullivan. I'm really excited um, today to have uh, Glenn Depke with us. Um, Glenn, welcome to the show. No, oh, thank you, Matthew. It's my pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Wonderful. So let me just give you guys a brief background on Glenn. So Glenn, you founded the uh, Depke Wellness Clinic. Uh, clinic. <laughs> clinic. As you can see, I obviously need some work done between the connection between my brain and my mouth. Um, so you're based in Newport Beach uh, here in Southern California, mm-hmm. uh, and you specialize in teaching people how to deal with all the physical and mental challenges that are thrown at us from our diet choices, the stress we're under, the habits we have, the environmental factors that we're subject to. Um, and if you're running a business um, or you know, if you're alive, basically, uh, I think it's so important that you take the time to understand how your body works and how to fix it when it goes wrong. Uh, and Glenn, really, that's, that's what you do, I think. Is that, a, is that a fair sort of description or have I just scratched the surface? No, honestly, Matthew, you've done your homework on me. That's, that's pretty, pretty darn good. I don't know if I could have said it better myself, but uh, <laughs> yeah. And I, and I love how you added, if you're just alive, Right. Yes. You know, it's, it's, yeah, you know, I, I always, you know, whenever I'm, you know, just chatting, especially with business uh, people, whether it be business owners, CEOs, or any high level business uh, executive, you know, there's, there's just a ton of stress that they're under on a consistent basis. And what, what people don't recognize is that that stress has a physiological uh, you know, symptom that it creates. And, and most people don't, don't recognize it until it's really kind of too late. But what you brought up is perfect though, because it's not just high level business executives and CEOs and owners of companies. I mean, it's, 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 you know, Mr. And Mrs. America, you know, that are just going to work and, you know, trudging through traffic and, you know, trying to deal with their relationship and their family and their children and bills in the mail. And it's endless. So I mean, really who doesn't this affect, right? I think the, you're you're right. I think the, the, Big problem is we'll go to college, university, whatever, we'll get our MBAs. I could tell you how to build a nuclear you know, power station, but I can't tell you why I'm feeling stressed, fat, fatigued, tired. So I could be a rocket scientist on one side, but for some reason, none of us seem to want to concentrate on finding out how our bodies work. And, and is that... That's my, that's my opinion. Is that something that you find is, is, is a reality? Yes. And, and I don't know that I would say it's that people don't want to find out. Uh, it's Well, they don't know. I mean, Right. They, yeah. Yeah, exactly. They, they don't know. And, and then they don't, even if they want to know, it's where do you look nowadays? And, and it's almost like because we have so many places to look, it really means we have nowhere to look. Exactly. Yeah, because there's so much information out on the internet today about health, uh, but really, what of it is is correct? You know, what you know, what rabbit hole could actually worsen your health? You know, what rabbit hole can you throw a lot of time, money, and effort into and actually have no change in your life? And then, what rabbit hole actually leads you into the place where you can actually, you know, feel younger, leaner, more vibrant, deal with stress better? You know, have way improved mental capacity to uh, really push into anything in your life. And I think that's the big, you know, challenge for people overall is if they want to look, where do they look and what's really, what's real and what's not. And I think what happens is that health tends to just be one of those things that is either constant or it, it doesn't get worse, but it's one of those things that you tend to not look at until there's a problem. I think that's the majority of it. So, well, <laughs> so it's yeah, I, I totally get that. And, and honestly, worse off with men. Yeah, in in my practice, honestly, our our, you know, our center in, in Newport Beach, we've got, I would say, at least eighty percent of our client base is is female. Yeah, because they don't wait until they get hit over the head with a hammer. Yeah. To to go seek out attention, whereas men typically we're we're kind of, you know, we're, we're taught and we've got patterns to just push through things, to suck it up, to deal with it. 
and we wait until something significant happens. Unfortunately, sometimes that's too late, uh, or, or, or we reach the point where you know, we've put ourselves under such you know, distress within our body and created so many imbalances. It's really daunting to overcome that. You know, so, so that's where I love that you know, typically women will take that approach where as soon as something feels a little bit off, they're seeking attention. And, and I, what's, what's nice though nowadays is men are actually starting to create that shift. I'm getting more yeah. and more men in, in my center all the time. But I, I think a part of it is because with something that you know, I'm sure we're going to talk about today with stress hormones and adrenal function, that's the area where I could be very left brain and it makes a lot of sense for men and, and they resonate with it. And when, they res when, when a man resonates with something and yeah. gets it intellectually, that's when they buy in. Let's do, let's do that. Let's talk specifically about stress. So stress is the bane of the entrepreneur or the <laughs> business person or, you know, and, and the, the, the response is, you don't understand, you can't fix it. It's all going on in my head, um, you know, and it's affecting my sleep patterns. It's affecting my relationships, but, you know, it can't be fixed because it's all to do with the business um, and, um, so, you know, what's the point of even trying to bother? All I need to do is get some sleep, you know, and so I'll take some sleeping tablets and, you know, how, do, how do you unwind all of that? And how do you get back to basics and, and get people to understand what causes stress? Well, and, and, and Matthew, I'm glad you brought it up in the way you did too, because that's exactly how most people think of stress. And, and, and not to take anything away from that, because obviously mental and emotional stress is a huge impact on our lives. But stress is more than just mental and emotional. And this is the part that most people are missing, you know, because stress outside of mental emotional could be inflammatory stress. It could be uh, nutritional stress into either what we would refer to the SAD diet, the acronym for the standard American diet, you know, high in sugars and processed foods. It could be stress due to food sensitivity. It could be stress due to infection in the body, which is much more prevalent than you may think right now. Uh, and it could be tied into any level of toxicity, whether it's environmental toxins or chemical toxins or heavy metal toxins. So <clears throat> the stress is really all encompassing and it really is affected by many different areas, not just that mental emotional. And, and the other key point that you brought up, and I'm so glad you did again in that way, when you mentioned that you know, if you've got this business owner and they have this mental emotional stress and they might even have the idea in their head, well, this, this is my business. This isn't going to go away. And, and that's a real statement. You know, this, this mo for most of us, the stress that we have is just a part of our lifestyle based on choices we make. And unless we completely make new choices, we're going to still have these same levels of stress that we're dealing with mentally, emotionally every day, except what most people don't recognize is that even with the level of stress you have, that can not change at all. So all of your stress, in, you know, stress triggers can really remain the same. But if you improve your stress hormone system, which we'll refer to as your adrenal glands, you can actually improve your coping mechanism because that's the thing that I see blow out on people all the time. You know, there's, there's, I'm going to be technical just for a moment and then I'll sure. make it easy. So there's something called an HPA access, which stands for your hypothalamus pituitary and adrenal access. Now, uh, the job of that, of that HPA access is to bring your body into a functional state of balance after a stressful event, situation, or time frame in your life. And, 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 and Matthew, as you know, as well as everybody listening and watching, we all know that we all have stress. Yeah. You know, and and when, that, when the adrenals are working well and that HP axis is doing its job, we can live moderate to high stress lives because what will happen is we'll have stress, it'll peak, and then the HP axis brings us into a functional balance. And then we have another peak, and then we have another functional balance. And, and we can live very healthy, happy lives uh, without really feeling the effects of the stress when all of that is working. But the challenge though is when that HP axis burns out, when the adrenals aren't working well anymore because we've lost vitality, basically instead of that stress balance, stress balance, stress balance that we were referring to, now all of our stress is accumulative. Yep. It's like having an inbox for your mail. That mail goes in every day, but you never empty the inbox, right? Yep. 
And, and that's when people blow off that coping mechanism. And, and for everybody, just think, think just about yourself in the last like five years, you might recognize today that the stress that you dealt with, with no problem, which is roll off your sleeve five years ago, you might recognize that that same level of stress pushes you over the edge today. And that's because of this, this blowout of that HPA access. What are the symptoms of someone who are the physical symptoms of someone that is beginning to have their stress coping mechanisms breaking down? Yes. Yeah. And, and from varying degrees, depending on to what level you're dealing with this, you know, uh, as an example, when, I, when I'm talking about uh, adrenals and, and adrenal function, which is tied into these stress hormones, we're looking at, uh, I always look at it from three different levels. There's a stage one, two, and three that we would potentially recognize. And now, uh, people who are in stage one, they're in the high stress response. So you're already stuck in that chronic stress response and you're producing a lot of the hormone called cortisol, which is your body's primary stress response hormone. Now, the symptoms that, and here's what's interesting, Matthew, with stage one too. I almost never see a client in stage one. Yeah. Because in stage one, they still have energy but it's, it's stimulated energy. It's like drinking a coffee or eating sugar all day to maintain energy, but it's that constant production of cortisol that's providing that stimulated energy. So people almost never seek attention. And, and in a business perspective, this could be stress caused by, you know, the fear of running out of money, the, which is that sort of constant fear. It could be the fear of not getting enough deals, the fear of of all sorts of things or or the stress caused by any one of a million things in business. It's that constant day-to-day application of never going away. So that's, that's what is that sort of keeps the cortisol levels up. Is that, was that what's happening? Yes, absolutely. And it, and it's a, a simple way I always describe that because that response, that response is a very natural response, but the way our bodies, whether, whether you believe in, uh, you know, uh, creation or evolution or combination of that, regardless of that, the body has a, a design stress response, but that stress response is really designed for when we're attacked by the saber tooth tiger. Yeah. yeah. But, but we wouldn't be attacked by saber tooth tiger all day, every day. But now because of basically how our mind works and the, and the mind will actually take the stressors of traffic on the way to the office, bills in the mail, uh, challenges with management you know the, the list goes on and on of all these stressors and basically your body is responding almost 24 7 as if you're being attacked by a saber-toothed tiger yeah. and 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 that's when see and that's when we start to get in this chronic elevated cortisol that's when we start to blow out that hp axis and that leads then into the the really the lack of vitality in the adrenals which now start that's when we start to see a lot of the symptoms come up for, for many people. And that's when we start to see this also manifest as significant health issues. So would that be sort of stage two, I guess? Is that right? A, yes. Right. Yeah. It's a, the stage one is elevated cortisol. The stage two is when you're going to start to have different times of the day where you don't even have enough cortisol for normal body function. And then the stage three is basically when the bottom falls out on the whole system. You know, you just lost vitality across the board. So some of these symptoms, stage two i mean stage one i can get i mean i mm-hmm. that feeling of <clears throat> you know that feeling that you're uh, pre-matched nerves like you're just right. about to run onto the pitch just about to run a race that feeling of butterflies but you can sort of deal with it because you know you've got that strength that vitality but what are the symptoms of stage two how do you know that you've gone beyond that point of manageability and you're beginning to get into the danger zone yeah, great, great question, Matthew, too, because this is where, this is where people start to recognize it uh, physically uh, as well as mentally and emotionally. Uh, in stage two, uh, typically people uh, tend to become a little fluffier, start gaining weight, uh, especially around the midsection. Uh, generally, we start to have inflammatory conditions, and you would recognize that by, you know, if you wake up in the morning and you get out of bed and you're a little stiff you know, in the first few steps, or you're sitting at your desk at the office and you get up and, oh, it's that, it's that, it's the agony of those first few steps, you know, that's inflammatory conditions, or people start to have challenges with sleep. And some, and and here's a big issue with the sleep challenges. Sometimes it's recognized because 
you know, we know if we can't fall asleep and we know if we're waking up many times during the night. But if you're not getting into a deep sound sleep, it's not that you have a recognition, oh, my sleep sucks. Yeah, you know, but it's the recognition when you get up, you don't feel refreshed, you know, because that's one of the things I tell clients all the time. You know, we should all wake up in the morning like we're like, literally like we're five years old in this Christmas morning. That's how the body should wake up. And yep. uh, so we start to, to see these little nagging things occur as we enter into uh, stage stage two. And, and again, as said, when we get into the stage three, now, we, now we're looking at pe people who are now being diagnosed with significant health issues and some major chronic disease states. So that, that's what's really awesome about this is that when we deal with the stress properly and help support adrenal function and get to the triggers, you know, that's the other thing. We want, to, we want to uncover whatever the triggers are that's causing all this, but all of this is really preventable. And, 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 and the other, uh, on top of that, because a lot of people are, most people are going to watch this. You're thinking, I'm already there. I'm already in at least a stage one, probably a stage two or stage three. Uh, but so it's not just about being preventable. As long as you're living and breathing, this can recover also. You can reset that HPA access. You could bring, help bring back balance into the adrenal glands and assist your body in achieving that. There's, but there's just so many ways that you could address this. But uh, again, it, it's, it's mostly because we just don't understand the stress hormone system and adrenal glands. That's, that's the big aspect of this. And the other challenge is, I'm saying to you, okay, I understand what you're saying, but my stress is never going to go away. So I'm never going to be able to get out of this vicious cycle. So how can anything you say help me? Because my business challenges aren't going to go away. So I'm just going to get back into the same problem. Yeah, and, that, and that's a, a, common, uh, a common concern that I'll hear. That I've heard literally for uh, about 16 years now. And I always tell people, we're, we're not even making any attempt to really change your life on that level. You know, most people are committed to what they're doing and they're not going to change that. But if you change how your body's functioning, basically what happens is you change how you perceive stress and how you react to it because your body, your, your hormonal system, your, your brain and neurotransmitters and all of, all of these little aspects of balance in your body can now work properly. So the stress level no longer has the same impact. And that's when, I mean, it's, it's like when that happens to people, it's like the big proverbial light bulb goes off and they're just like, oh, why didn't I address this years ago? So it's a bit, I know what you're saying. It's a bit like when you really are stressed about something and you get through it and you look back and say, what was all the fuss about? Why was I getting so worried? So, so what you're saying is that you can help people get to that point and look forward and actually deal with ongoing stress with that same feeling of, yeah, it's no problem. I can deal with this. Is that, well, is that, is that how yeah. we can help ourselves to do that? That is, that is true. And it's, and it's partially by helping balance these like functional physiological uh, issues in the body, such as the adrenals that we're talking about. Uh, but also on top of that, and I think this is a, a really huge part of this for everybody too, is we, we all have, basically mental emotional patterns that we live into you know that are typically taught to us at very young ages generally by our primary caregivers which are our mother and father and and i don't know about anybody else but i can tell you my parents never taught me what i would consider healthy ways of perceiving and dealing with stress you know and 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 i don't blame them or have any ill feelings toward them for that they were just teaching me the best that they knew how you know, my, my, my mother who is now passed, but my father's going to be uh, actually 90 this coming year. And, uh, and he's, uh, you know, they grew up in the end of the depression. Yes. So, so basically all they really knew, because this is what they were taught as young children, they, they know fear, you know, they know to be afraid. And, and so that's what they knew. And that's what they taught me. You know, like, as an example, I, t I tell clients all the time, if you were, if you were a Japanese person born into a Japanese family, you would expect to learn Japanese, right? You wouldn't expect to be fluent in Dutch and not speak that Japanese. So yes. when, you're, when you're born into a family that has an underlying energy of whether it be fear or guilt or anger or whatever that is, you don't expect to learn the language of personal empowerment. 
you don't expect to learn the language of, uh, or the, the understanding of how to deal with things in this way. So that's a, another big part of, of what we do here because it's not just the functional body. It's not just these mechanical aspects. It's also over here on what's going on mentally and emotionally and energetically that has such a huge impact for all of us. And, and it's, and, and what I see from a, a business perspective, you know, because yeah, you know, I'm, I'm 52 right now, almost 53. And I've been in business since I've been 20 years old. I used to be in the restaurant business. And then, uh, you know, I started to get into health for personal reasons. And then I, I, I've been in the health profession now for over 16 years. Uh, but, you know, from that perspective, you know, I've watched these patterns change over the years. And, and what you do in your mind and in your body has also a direct impact on what happens within your business. Yes. Yeah, this, that, that's the part that nobody's ever taught. You can go to the Harvard Business School. They're not going to teach you about mental, emotional programming. And they're not going to teach you about you know, the impact that your stress hormones are going to have on your, your ability to even make business decisions that are sound decisions that are going to, they're going to catapult you forward into a place of, of profit and, and really everything you're looking at for your business. And which, I, I think, which, is, which is crazy because that's actually probably the most valuable training you can get. <laughs> you know, that is, that is so true. And, it's, and you know, through my years of being in business and, and really with starting out in the restaurant business, which to me is one of the toughest businesses yeah, out absolutely. there. And, yeah. uh, but, but I had a, and I didn't go to business school, so I, I can't say for Sam, but I had a partner at the time who did go to a business school. And it was interesting, nothing he learned in business school really was he able to utilize in business. Hey, that's the big secret. I can not <laughs> tell anyone. So for those of you, you know, that have just signed up to go to business school, be prepared to be disappointed, basically. Yeah, exactly. Well, you'll get the degree, right? But, but you're right. But I think, but is it possible? So you're coming back to your metaphor about being taught Japanese. So if you were brought up in an environment where the emotional intelligence, the emotional training was significantly higher, where you were taught not to fear failure. You were taught from a very young age to, to look after your body, to deal with stress, to recognize stress. Would you be a very different person, do you think, than someone that was brought up in a more traditional background? Oh, 100%. I mean, there's, <clears throat> that, that's the big thing that we're looking at. And, and, if, and when you look at people of a high level of success and, 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 and to define when I say high level of success, it's just not monetary success. Yeah. You know, people who are doing well financially, but also rocking it in their relationships and their health and their enjoyment of their time in their play and fun. Uh, you know, that's that high level of success. And, and I find that the people who are stuck in, and we'll, we'll just use the fear uh, you know, model as an example the people are stuck in the model of fear, you can still create financial success. But because of that pattern of fear, you probably can't let go of something in your business. You probably don't allow yourself to have fun. You probably have a dysfunctional relationship because you won't put time in the relationship because you can't move away from your business. So there's all of those aspects. And, and, and here's the great thing with that. Those can all change. You know, they're, they're not set in stone. These are not c cemented into us, you know, but they do require some, some effort, both with the physical and functional body, as well as mentally, emotionally, energetically. But I see people change this, you know, all the time. And, and, and as an example, I've got, I've got one client that I've worked with for a number of years, probably about six years now. And we've done a little bit of the functional work, but most of what we work on is really on what's going on mentally, emotionally, and energetically. And, and this person in his business, he's been number one in the country for, for almost that whole time, but over five years, number one in the country. Yeah. Because every Monday, he's in working on the things that are most important in his life, which is really what's going on up in here. And so you can turn the clock back, unwind all the bad stuff that you've been taught, and put yourself on a, tra on a trajectory for success. Is that, is that what you found? Yes, and, and I'll, I'll go even one step further than that. You know, we don't lose what we've gone through because that's all, you know, that's all the growth. Like all the, all, the, 
all the dysfunctional situations that we've gone through, all the stressful situations, if we could just look at that as feedback, yep. and that's, that's what it ends up being. You know, and that's, the, that's the really awesome uh, aspect of this is that you know, we could look back in all of our stressful events in the past that have pushed us over the edge, and we get all emotional about it, and it affects our health, and it affects everything in our lives. But once you clear this up, when you look back, there's no more negative emotional attachment to it. It's all, it's all more like, oh, wow, I'm so glad that happened. You know, that, that $100,000 I lost in that deal, that saved me $1.2 million on this deal. You know, so I'm thankful I lost that, you know, and I've actually, I was through a similar situation where, you know, lost a bunch of money in a business deal. And, you know, at the time it's agonizing, right? But, you know, now when I look at my, my life and my business and everything moving forward, boy, those, I couldn't have gone to school and paid that amount of money for the education I got from those situations. And, and, and I think you're right. You have to look at it that way. Um, otherwise you just end up in this sort of vicious downward spiral. But so, so, so there's the emotional element but i want to also talk about the nutritional element and how important it is um if you want to get your head right you've got to get the balance everywhere else as well so let's talk about the role of nutrition and as a startup entrepreneur you, you know don't be tempted to do what people think you should do which is to live off mcdonald's and pizza you know is that a good idea or is that something you would you would strongly recommend not to do yeah, what we do, when I first got my start in, in the health business, you know, it was all about nutrition. And I cannot say enough the impact that nutrition has on every aspect of your life and how deep it really is. And we're really not taught this, you know, and, and we're, we're, you know, and if we follow the, the basic food groups or the pyramid or all these things that are being taught to us nowadays, we're really leaving ourselves in a, a basically a, a business dysfunction. Yeah, because as an example, and I'll just use some simple things. You know, uh, what most people don't know physiologically is our brain functions based on glucose, which is blood sugar. And if blood sugar is too high or too low, the brain doesn't function well. So if the brain doesn't function well, you can't make good decisions and choices. You uh, are typically going to be more emotional. Mood swings are going to be a part of your business. And we know we don't want to make business decisions from emotion. We want to make them from intellect. But, but what happens with blood glucose is completely determined by what you eat as a, one of the more significant factors. So if somebody goes out for lunch and you have uh, bread with lunch and you have a, a soda with lunch or, or maybe uh, something to increase your energy, like an energy drink, we're thinking we're saving ourselves with that. But all of those things that we would have, those processed carbohydrates, those sugary drinks, and, and even, if it's a, even if it's a fruit juice, it's still sugar. And people are really pumping themselves with sugar and they're affecting their blood sugar levels. They're spiking glucose, which then creates a lowering and a too low of a glucose, which is a hypoglycemic condition. And we wonder why we're you know, almost falling asleep at the desk two hours after lunch and why when somebody asks us to do something, we can't, fu we can't like mentally function, we can't comprehend. And these are all huge impacts in, in how our brain works and, and really how our body works. But it's not terribly difficult to fix that. I mean, no. do you have a, a few pieces of simple advice just to, you know, other than get off the sugar. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's when you go to eat, stay away from the processed carbs, stay away from the breads, the pastas, uh, things that are actually going to, they're going to really knock down your mental capacity. Uh, go and whenever you have a meal, always eat a protein, a vegetable and a fat together. Yeah, because that actually provides you the best ability to convert food into energy and stabilize blood sugar. So if, if we use an example of somebody who goes out and you go for lunch and maybe, uh, maybe lunch is a burger with a bun and an order of fries and a Coke, okay, which is typical, right? Yeah. Uh, now, you can go to that same restaurant. So maybe that's your gourmet hamburger place you love to go for lunch. And you can completely change your functional body's reaction by ordering a burger protein style or open face. Instead yeah. of the fries, get a salad. Have a big, you know, half of an avocado on that. Get some really good fat and, and have some water with lemon instead of the Coke. 
it's not much of a difference, but as far as how it affects your body functionally and your, and your ability to operate within your business, it is night and day. It's the, it's the, it's sometimes, believe it or not, this might sound harsh, but this is true. It's the difference between the doors being closed on a business and having really high levels of success in a business. And I think you're right because people just uh, talk about, when you talk about food, the natural reaction is to think, well, actually the effect on food is either, you know, is to make me fat or not. There's no generally uh, understood, I'm sure there is actually, but I mean, most people don't naturally um, uh, you know, correlate the food you eat to how your brain functions. Right. You know, they may think, oh, if I eat too much food, I'll feel a bit sleepy. But, but what you're saying is that there are real deep physiological uh, changes that occur because of what you eat, which actually make you unable to make proper business decisions or, you know, basically put you on a, a completely downward spiral in terms of your ability to, to do what otherwise you could have done. Yeah, Matthew, you're hundred percent right. And it, and it goes, you know, and, and even on a, on a deeper level, and this is another, another aspect of nutrition that most people are missing is, you know, we hear a lot, uh, you know, if, if we're on the, on the internet and searching nutrition and, and health, we're typically going to run across uh, the thoughts of things like gluten sensitivity and food sensitivities and allergies and intolerances and all of that. And, and what most people don't know, well, at first off, uh, if you're thinking that like being gluten free is a fad, you can throw that out. You know, there, yeah. there's definitely an issue with gluten in our country. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, 86% of the people who have, as an example, gluten sensitivity, they're asymptomatic. Yeah. So it's not like you eat it and then you feel terribly directly after eating it. But, but all the research shows us though, that when we think of a food sensitivity, we think of it affecting the stomach. But the, the more uh, prevalent research now shows that it more directly affects your brain. I, I literally have had, I, I can think of one client off the top of my, uh, my head that we tested this particular woman for uh, a gluten sensitivity and we, it tests 21 different components of wheat and gluten. And it was interesting. Out of the 21 different components, 20 were spot, spot on perfect, no problem whatsoever. But this particular woman, she was off in just one level. And that level, she was off the chart sensitive, and that was proof, that particular mm -hmm. uh, aspect of what we were measuring there, proved that when she ate gluten, her immune system was t attacking her brain tissue. Wow. Yeah. Tell me that isn't a huge issue. And, and, and yeah, these are- just, But you wouldn't know that. That's the thing. You wouldn't, you just bumble along, you know, as normal thinking, I don't feel great today. What could it possibly be? And, and so that's what you're offering is this, this ability to say, well, these food groups actually have such a tremendous effect on you. So this is what you should be focusing on. So, you know, PL is one thing, but your P and L <laughs> right. effectively is, you know, it has to take, you know, top billing at some point. Right now. And, and, and it, and the trap is that again, people don't, it's not an immediate impact for most people. Yeah, so because if we think about it, if somebody will just use stick with the example of a gluten sensitivity, if somebody has a gluten sensitivity and that's driving an inflammatory response, which over time becomes a chronic inflammatory response and it's systemic, so your whole body's inflamed. If you want to look up on your, your search engine and put in chronic disease states and then inflammation, what you'll find is that every chronic disease state known to man has its origin in an inflammatory condition. Yeah, you know, whether it's heart disease and having a heart attack or your circulatory system and stroke or type two diabetes, you know, the, the list just goes on and on. Yeah. Now, if we ate the food and had a heart attack, we wouldn't eat the food again, right? It would be pretty simple, yeah. but it doesn't happen that way. It's this long, you know, drawn out, you know, uh, aspect of, of really suffering on different levels and progressively getting slightly worse until we get to the point where we have the heart attack, the stroke, diagnosed with cancer or you know, diabetes or whatever it may be. And, I, and, and me, I'm of, the, I'm of the place, you know, I really honestly feel that I'm not even halfway through my life. You know, I have a goal of living to 110, but really not 110 in a wheelchair or, or you know, walking in a, with a walker. Yes. I'm really living a, a healthy, vibrant, active life until very close to the end of my life. And uh, so in order to do that, I have to make choices today 
that put me in that position on a consistent basis. And, and that's what everybody has the ability to do. And, and honestly, Matthew, the, the catch on this, and, and, and again, one of the traps is that a lot of times when mentally and emotionally we're distraught and we have all of this anxiety and nervousness and fear and stress that we're dealing with leads us to kind of self-medicating with alcohol or with, sure. with, with desserts and sugar and, and bread. Like pe pe most people don't know this, but when you eat bread products, it stimulates the production of a neurotransmitter called serotonin, which is nicknamed the happy transmitter neurotransmitter. Yes. So when your neurotransmitter levels go up, you feel happier. You have a smile, you yes. know, but, but it's, it, uh, but unfortunately it's a, a temporary stimulation and afterwards from eating those same products, now the neurotransmitters go down and it perpetuates that, that, uh, that habit and the pattern and the, that deep desire and addiction basically to taking care of things in this way when there's so much simpler ways to do it. But just even though they're so simple, they're just, they're things that they're, these are avenues that most of us have not been taught that we can easily learn. And I think that's absolutely right. I think the biggest culprit is education is lack of education. This is not something that has just been discovered. This is something that has been around since, you know, Hippocrates himself. <clears throat> but it's really just people's understanding of how it, how it works and take, and it's also, I guess, is it the, the, the society that we're in where everything is about, you know, the here and now and the quick, uh, you know, the get rich quick schemes and instant gratification. And nobody really, I think more and more people are beginning to now. I think there's much more of a movement towards this, trying to understand how things work. But, but it is education. Yes, and, it's, uh, and there, there's one key point of this that is really an issue. And that's, that's even tied into what we've been talking about with adrenals. Because uh, in conventional medicine, there is no diagnosis of adrenal insufficiency or adrenal fatigue or anything you know, about adrenals whatsoever. And, and in fairness to the doctors, there's no diagnosis because there's no medication. Yeah. You know, they can't say, oh, I'm going to diagnose you with adrenal insufficiency and here, take this drug and that will help you improve. Uh, but, but adrenal insufficiency is very real and, and so real. And Matthew, I never shared this with you before, but this, this is really astounding. I've looked at over 5,172 adrenal saliva test kits over the years. Yeah. And it's my last count I had. <clears throat> and out of those over 5,000, take a wild guess, Matthew, and, and can take this guess for everybody listening right now, uh, to how many of those that I see come back healthy and balanced at the onset of a new client, so when they first come in, just so, or any wild guess. 40%. Okay. So 40% would be, you know, approximately 25, 2,400, right? Yes. I've only seen six, not even 6%. Six out of over 5,172 that when they first came into my center where they had adrenals that were functioning well. And but, but, presumably this is at different stages of, of non-functioning. So, uh, right. But you're saying that most of those are at the point, well, 566 or so were at the point where, um, sorry, 5,166 were at the point where something had to be done soon because they were at a... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, most... Like I said, I, I almost never see people in stage one. The clients that I see are generally in stage two or stage three and have no yes. recognition that this is going on. And it's, and it's, and it's basically when, when the adrenals are off, what most people don't understand either is that your adrenals impact your entire body holistically. Yes. Yeah. And, and really, and, and even tied into the aspects of business, it, it affects your, your, your quality of sleep and mood, your ability to memorize and learn your neural connectivity. So your ability to make choice and decisions, uh, all of these things are really impacted by yeah. what's going on in the adrenals. And it's completely ignored by conventional medicine and very often misunderstood even in holistic care. Absolutely. And so, and again, these, the sort of symptoms you're talking about is, you know, inflammation, stiffness, lethargy, um, not, not knowing 
why you're feeling bad, but feeling crappy. Right. All of these different things that I'm sure we all, and you're right, we just put it down to old age or, you know, I guess it's never going to get any better. This is what it's going to be like. But, but you're saying that it's, you have the ability to, to make significant changes to really improve people that suffer from that. Oh yeah. You know, and, and, and as an example, there was this, I remember one woman who uh, came in to see me and she only really, she didn't have significant health issues. She just had like this nagging 10 pounds she couldn't get rid of. So yeah. we worked together nutritionally and we worked on her fundamentals of health and we looked at her adrenal function and she, she was one of those in like an early stage too. Yes. And, and we, we, we got her on the proper protocol to help her body, you know, find its balance again. And the one day we had a follow-up appointment and, and she comes in and she, and she said, she said, well, I have, I have something exciting to tell you. And I, and I, and I was like, oh, did you lose the, is the 10 pounds gone? And she says, yes. well, and she said, well, she says, that's been gone. She said, but I expected that because I came in to see you to do that. So I expected that that was going to be an outcome. But she said, and this woman was in her uh, younger fifties uh, actually. Yes. She says, but my mental clarity and my mind, she says, I, I've, I'm thinking and comprehending and learning like I'm 18 again. Fantastic. And, yeah. and she told me, I thought that that's just a part of the natural aging process. And once that's gone, it's gone for good. And, and it's not, you know, we can really you know, change that because when you're starting to do things like, yes. you know, put your keys down and not know where you put them or walk in a room and you don't know why or pick up your cell phone and wonder who you're going to be calling. Believe it or not, you can get that back, and it's and it's better as as somebody who I, I I come from a family that has had a lot of neurodegenerative issues. You know, yeah. I have a grandmother who died of severe dementia. My mother died with severe dementia. My brother passed on with ALS, another yeah. Yeah. Uh, another neurological issue. And I used to be an epileptic. Wow. You know, I I was able to overcome that naturally, but uh, but so so for me. When I start to recognize people with, you know, this, this change in mental function and mental capacity and comprehension and all of that, you know, that's so important to me because I want everybody to have a healthy brain and a healthy functioning brain until, until you move on from this body. Yes. Yeah. Because you know, the, 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 the thought of anybody going down the path of neurodegeneration is not a pretty picture and it's all preventable. That's, That's the key thing. It's, it's yeah. preventable. Now, now you've, you, there's a, a book that you have here, which you've yeah. read, uh, which I read, which is, which is a fantastic guide. It's called uh, fat fatigued and frustrated, how to reverse the clock and feel young again. And, and it is, it's, you know, 200 pages of distilled wisdom and it's something that you can just fly through. So um, how else can people get hold of you or how do they find out more about the programs that you run, how to tap into this knowledge experience, uh, you know, that you have and to and, and help turn the clock back for them. Well, for people who just want um, wisdom and uh, learning and, and knowledge, I mean, you could, that's as simple as going to my website, which is depkewellness.com. It's D-E-P-K-E wellness.com. And I literally have uh, over 10 years of weekly articles that I've written. Wow. So there's a, there's a, you know, a wealth of information in there, but, but for people who, and, and this is really, uh, this is something that is is very important to me in our center is that uh, when people don't know what it is exactly that I do or how I would help them achieve X, Y, or Z, uh, I like people to understand that first. So the other way that anybody could reach out, you can simply call my office at 949-954-6226 yeah. and you can request a 20-minute phone or Skype consultation with me just to understand what it is. And it, and it really short of a deposit to hold your time, it costs you nothing except yes. for time out of your day to potentially change your life and change your business on ways that are, you know, maybe borderline unimaginable right now. Yeah. And, and you know, I completely get it and I completely subscribe to it because it's, uh, it's, you know, there's the science, as you said, from the very beginning, you know, you're, you're taking problems and applying left brain solutions. So this is very much, it's, 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 the foundation, the cornerstone is in science. It's, you've got 5,172, that's a large <laughs> sample. So, you know, this is a lot of, there's a lot of evidence there um, and uh, you're seeing results. So I think it's, I think people would be um, well advised to get in touch with you to find out more how to deal with these things before it becomes a problem. But, you know, Glenn, I, 
thank you so much for coming on and for you know just giving us a, a tiny insight <laughs> in, into what you can do. And um, uh, I'll put all of your contact details uh, on the website. And I, I really hope that people you know do the right thing and get onto you as soon as possible. All right, excellent, Matthew. And thank you so much. I mean, it's it's always I get up in the morning to talk about this. You know, this is my life. This I live it. I work it. I breathe it. And uh, and I love when I have the opportunity to share. So thank you so much. Thank you.